So this is definitely a very different video for you guys today. So I was flown out to Sweden by EA to check out Anthem. I had the chance to go hands-on with it for an entire day. And I know you guys expect a Star Wars video, a Star Wars Battlefront 2 video, but I know you want to see this. So I wanted to let you guys know what I thought about Anthem while showing off some brand new gameplay that I captured. We're going to be seeing the Interceptor Javelin in action. They are the fast, nimble Javelin, and we're actually using our ultimate ability here right now. But yeah, you're going to be learning uh, a little bit about the game today, but you're also going to be getting my opinion about what I thought about the game. Was it any good? What I didn't like about the game, but by no means is this considered a review. So remember that going forward. And remember also, I'm doing a big Anthem giveaway. So if you want a chance to win Anthem for the PS4, Xbox One, or PC, be sure to subscribe to my other YouTube channel, Open World Games, where I am covering this uh, game extensively. Then also follow our new uh, fan page dedicated to Anthem for a chance to win a copy of Anthem. I'm going to keep you guys up to date about this, but yeah. Uh, check out that uh, other YouTube channel, Open World Games. But let's get into this. Let's talk about what I didn't like about it, what I did like about it. But also a very special thank you to EA for flying me out to Sweden, paying for my trip and hotel. Greatly appreciate it. But guys, here we go. Let's check it out. So what did I like about Anthem from my time playing the game? So I did play the game at E3. Then I got the chance uh, to also play it in Sweden. Special thank you goes out to EA for flying me out, paying for my hotel and the trip, uh, and allowing me the chance to share this with you guys. So, goes without saying, the game is downright gorgeous. I mean, the Frostbite engine still has it. Uh, of course, if you don't know, the Frostbite engine is running games like Battlefield 5, Star Wars Battlefront, Need for Speed. These are really good looking games, and no doubt, Anthem is gorgeous. So, uh, this is running on PC. It's ultra settings. It's going to be 60 frames per second. So that's really nice. I have not gotten to see the console version just yet. Uh, so I'm hoping that one uh, really stands up uh, as well. But seeing Battlefield and a lot of the other games, they look pretty, pretty good on the console. So the game is really good looking. So also this game is very much driven by that loot experience going out finding that rare weapon the legendary gear and stuff like that so there's going to be a wide variety of loot and weapons with this game uh and from my time my day uh playing the game i only played for i think it was like six hours or something like that i got a lot of loot and a wide variety of weapons so i got to experiment with uh you know a lot of different uh things in that regard so i was pretty impressed from just the six hours with how much loot i actually obtained so that was really noteworthy to me walking away from this experience playing Anthem. Now, uh, we didn't get to really play with a lot of the super rare weapons though. And from what I understand, there's some really cool uh, variants in terms of weapons and the rarity for those weapons. So you'll be getting those rarities, uh, you know, based on your difficulty that you play on. So this is going to be basically the normal difficulty that you are seeing here. Uh, and then there's like a total of six difficulties. Uh, two of them, I think it's like three of them maybe need to be unlocked. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, that's going to really up the chance of getting those rare and legendary weapons and gear for sure. And I think that's going to be uh, where our players are going to really be entertained by it. And uh, the highlight uh, was really playing with uh, friends. You know, I was playing with uh, fellow YouTubers here, uh, Rexy and then Tyrodin. Uh, they were a blast to play with. So I think this game is going to be really driven by the experience of playing with others. And then, of course, beyond just the weapons, uh, I was also impressed by the fact that there are four different javelins. and They all have their own unique abilities and play styles. As you can see with the Interceptor, he is absolutely shredding everything. I mean, he is so much fun uh, to play with. Well, in this case, it's a she. Uh, you could choose whatever, uh, whichever one you want, male or female, of course, from out of the gate. That's based on your pilot, and then you have your javelins. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this was my favorite javelin, no doubt. Just going in there and absolutely wrecking everything, uh, and they are extremely speedy here. Uh, so, uh, you can actually do this. Get this. You can actually have, uh, basically four interceptors. So, it's, it is four-player co-op, this game. 
but you can have four interceptors if you want to just go into stronghold or whatever whatever now they said that's going to make it more difficult but that would be so much freaking fun in my opinion uh, as you can see my buddies here are both the colossus javelin that's basically the tank javelin uh, which can shoot down mortars and all sorts of stuff but yeah you can go in and do whatever you want with this game in terms of your classes and i imagine that they would be adding more down the road as well considering that also you got to remember that the dlc is going to be free uh, but i am going to be talking about concerns with that in just a moment as well so there are concerns with that uh no doubt so yeah there's uh, various abilities you can uh unlock new abilities and i think you can upgrade them as well and then you can go further in and uh customize your javelin now this is where it gets crazy i got to actually mess with this but i can't show you the footage darn it but i can show you this this is from the bioware stream and the customization options in this game are crazy good so uh that's something that is very impressive with this game for sure they've like taken the technology from car games uh, this is how i view it and put them onto a javelin so it's so extensive i was so impressed with the customization for sure so absolutely amazing what you can do here you can see some of the results uh that you can uh actually create this is the i think this is the this is the ranger javelin might be the storm javelin i think this is the ranger javelin yeah uh but they're customizing the ranger javelin here and then you can also customize the storm javelin you can see how you can make uh your storm javelin look any way you want you get really ridiculous with it as well so uh, Arexi actually made a pink, uh, what was it, Colossus. He thought it was red. We're going to say it's pink. Pinky's red. Uh, so you can have bright, vibrant colors if you want to, uh, or just have something that makes uh, more sense in terms of lore, or whatever. Uh, now, also, uh, beyond, you know, your weapons and your javelins that you can get new gear for, you can also upgrade your pilot themselves. So there's a progression tree for your pilot. So as you can see, all of these things working together, the game seems to have a pretty extensive progression tree to it overall and some randomness in there to keep you going back into the open world and uh the strongholds and the missions and tried the higher difficulties to try to get those super rare weapons all right so it's really important to note beyond the four player co-op and the multiplayer and the pve experience uh, there's something called Fort Tarsus, if you did not know. Now, I can't show you footage of me roaming around Fort Tarsus, but I can show you stuff from the Bioware live stream. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be where you can actually talk to NPCs. And this is what I would consider the single-player type experience, uh, where you will be taking on story missions and stuff like that, and actually uh, talking with other NPCs. And the paths that you can choose are... Uh, you know, divert. You can actually diverge to several different paths uh, with this game as well. So there's going to be choice and consequence regarding your actual decision making uh, in this hub space, which is going to be Fort Tarsus. Then you'll have the ability to upgrade your javelin from here, take on missions and stuff like that. So uh, that's really cool. And it is in first person. So it's first person in Fort Tarsus, and then it's uh, third person when you head out into the open world take on your missions and stuff like that let me know what you guys make of that by the way would you prefer to have the option to switch to first person when actually exploring in the open world i didn't mind it at all i'm so used to playing third person games so i, I was like who cares i mean i love seeing the customization personally that's just me uh but yeah i didn't mind that at all uh, maybe it would be cool to see options but considering you're flying i could see that could be a little bit maybe a little bit weird who knows uh so yeah uh Fort Tarsus is really cool, and the story has me actually really, really intrigued as well. And then we got to talk about this. There's these huge mammoth creatures that do roam the open world known as the Titans. Uh, so uh, I really want to see more from that as well. But guys, uh, remember to stay tuned to the channel. I will keep you guys up to date on all things regarding that. Uh, but uh, overall, I was really impressed with the difficulty settings, the sense of being able to replay this game in that regard, and... Also, I did like how the loot system, the randomness, was kind of tied to the difficulty. So the more you up that, the more chances you get uh, for getting higher rarity gear and stuff. Got to remember that strongholds are going to be a big part of the game, too. They aren't raids. They're going to be extensive, like, uh, missions where you can actually get better loot and stuff. And they uh, pretty much always end with an uh, epic boss battle of some kind. So uh, that's really cool to know.
Uh, but also, uh, let's go ahead and talk about what I did not like about Anthem. What are my worries about this game? So that's going to be a really good question with this one for sure. Uh, so I uh, did actually get to try this game solo. And I think this game is a lot more fun playing with friends. Just goes without saying. Uh, so just remember that going into the single player. You can still do it single player, but I think it's going to be a lot more fun with friends. Now, also, the big concern is microtransactions. As I said before, the DLC in this game will be free. That's really cool. Uh, but uh, the microtransactions are going to be tied to cosmetics only. That's also really cool. But I'm still worried about how grindy this experience is going to be. If it's super grindy with the uh, microtransactions, I'm going to be really worried. Because uh, I still think cosmetics are super important. Although they're not enhancing gameplay in any way. You have to say cosmetics are extremely important uh, to any game. Uh, and then considering that it is free DLC, how much free DLC will we actually get down the road? That's going to be the question. And I think that's going to be dependent on the success of the game itself, uh, when how the game sells uh, out of base. And then also beyond that, when it comes to microtransactions. So we'll find out about that one. That's something I'm also really, really concerned about. So we'll see. Also, this game is PvE only. That means you and your buddies versus AI, and there is no PvP as of yet at launch. So I'm worried about that too. You know, uh, you have other games that do uh, have PvP, but uh, they could add that down the road. For me, uh, I usually, just lately, I've been playing a lot of PvE games. So I think there's an actual need for more PvE games like Anthem here. Uh, so uh, maybe they'll add it down the road. Let me know if that even worries you, the lack of PvP. Now, also with a game like this, the end game is super important. It's basically everything. It is the lifeblood of the game after you have actually completed it. How much does it enhance the longevity of the game? So uh, that's another thing that uh, is going to be concerning. Of course, the game has six difficulties. You have to unlock a few of those, and that's going to ramp up the difficulty for the stronghold, the open world, and stuff like that. But again, uh, it's going to come down to that in game. Will they uh, be adding stuff that really keeps us in the world of Anthem in the long term? So we'll have to wait and find out. So, uh, yeah, overall, I stepped away from this game. I had fun. I feel like the controls are stellar. I felt like, uh, you know, the Interceptor class, they're freaking awesome. I'm going to say I recommend if you want someone that is really like a guerrilla warfare type character, go with. The Interceptor Javelin for sure. Uh, but yeah, there's a wide variety of Javelins on offer. You know, so many types of gameplay styles supported. Uh, you know, beyond just getting in there and, you know, being a ninja and slicing and dicing. So, but guys, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more coverage of Anthem. Remember, I'm doing that big Anthem giveaway. So, if you want a chance... Uh, to win a copy of Anthem on either PS4, Xbox One, or PC, be sure to see that description for a chance to win. And then also be sure to subscribe and stay updated. But guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. And I will see you next time. Take it easy.